and a new prison had to be built where we should have been building houses and schools. We had to build a prison to house prisoners who were safely gathered in their quarters at Glendary. But they warned about the difficulties there and the potential for an explosion of the prison population, they turned their blind eye. They ignored the facts. They poo-pooed the comments. The result was a $750 million debt on the backs of Barbadians. Whereupon, whereupon, Ladies and gentlemen, every January 15, come hell or high water, I, as Minister of Finance, this government of the Democratic Labour Party has to find $30 million to pay for a prison. And my view on that matter, so clearly expressed, is that it should be called the ONSF Correctional Facility. It should be named after him. He pretended in Parliament that he was not present when it was approved. But we knew that he was there. And when Prime Minister Stewart and myself ran down the blows in him, that is why he stopped coming back to Parliament. Glenn Clark did so to me, came out. Esther <laughs> Sakou said, Chris, I think he had enough. As a doctor, he had enough. But Minister Ellis had told me that there were not sufficient ambulances out there available to come at the time. So I allowed him to escape. Yes. Dear God, can you imagine that an original judgment was handed in the courts of Barbados? Well, not in the court, by the arbiter. Or the arbitrator. For 30 odd million dollars to pay Mr. Barrett when the country was supposedly awash in money. And when after, Minister of Finance George Penn, Minister without portfolio. on Mr. Barack and that debt climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed and when we came into office the late David Thompson said to Mr. Barack we don't have all the money in the treasury to pay you one time we will give you a lump sum and then pay you the rest over time. Can you imagine that the rascals of the Barbados Labour Party, those political miscreants, said that Barack should get all of his money when they had the opportunity to pay Barack and would not pay him a cent? Well, Mr. Barrett, accepting bad advice from the Labour Party, say to Mr. Thompson, I want all of my money one time. Yet we are to be blamed consistently for not paying Mr. Barrett $70 million of debt. On a day. Have you forgotten Greenland? Another 70 or 80 million dollars! And not a toffee paper has gone to Greenland. Greenland has not even accepted George Finn. And he deserves to be up there. Now all of 
trust in the Democratic Party operate on the premise that the health of a nation is the wealth of a nation. Any one of us, whether you are black, white, brown, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are Christian, Jew or Muslim, whatever your calling is in life, sickness can befall you at any point in time. And when that happens, you want to know you get the best possible care available in this island. And that is what has driven our work in the Ministry of Health. We have not sat back and complained that we don't have millions of dollars. Yes, we would like more money. We have not sat back and said that we don't have the technology that's available abroad. We have not sat back and said we don't have the skills, clinical skills, as some developed nations have. What we have said is that we have the passion and commitment to ensure that all Barbadians, regardless of their calling in life, can access health care. And that is what has been driving the work of the Barbados government, the Ministry of Health under the Democratic Labour Party in the last five years, and it will be our guiding principle as we continue uh, well into the next five years or so. So those are the principles that have guided us. They're not the same principles that guided Jerome Walker and others when they were in the ministry. And let me say, because I, I, I don't want to dwell too much on the past, but it's imperative that you remember from whence we came. Yes. Under Jerome Xavier Walker. <laughs> the, and in Africa, they're not about, they're like two peas in the same pod. Buzz and buddies. You can, will well remember that almost every day there were complaints about the public health care system. Shortage of supplies, fighting with staff, industrial unrest, electrical outages, shortage of medicines. The QEH was not the place that anybody wanted to go. I have found that experience too. I found families and friends years ago who would say, look, I would rather die than go to the hospital. And that bothered me in Mexico. That bothered all of us. Because at the end of the day, all of us have a right to access to affordable health care in this country. Today, I don't think anyone with an open mind and fairness can say the same things about our public health care system. We have delivered and we have delivered well. So as Jerome Walker gets done, uh, he rose square, all be dead in a tight red bodice and curse me. I want him to know that our healthcare system is functioning and functioning well. Me make it abundantly clear. Here's the thing, we'll win that seat. The Democratic Labour Party, the Democratic Labour Party, to my mind, may not have placed enough emphasis on that before. And we sought to make Oin Arthur some kind of colossal giant in this country. Oin Arthur has been examined and found wanting. His sell-by date as a politician is gone. He, I don't care how they try to resurrect him for his political deathbed. He is then to read him his last rights conference. And it's nothing personal. The truth of the matter is that when Arthur's ideas, programs, and policies are tried, tested, and are in many respects not relevant to contemporary Barbados. And also, this silliness about making yourself behave as though you're God better than anyone else is wrong. And I know that if I'm going after, the Barbados Air Party is nothing. And that is why PNC Bank shall ensure that it's dust to death come February 21st. And we In my last civilized conversation, Kerry Simmons. I said, Kerry, why are you coming back into politics? Every seat you get is cut up. I did not wait to hear his response. 
We have a St. James North Harrisman who has been doing an excellent job. Harry Harrisman, sorry. Harry Harrisman. Who has been doing an excellent job as a parliamentary secretary in Prime Minister's office as a senator and is well on his way to joining us in Parliament on February 21st when elections are held.